Good morning. This, this topic is going to be about, at least in part, the new terms that I learned called microaggressions. The term microaggressions is a term that David Icke, the researcher from Britain, what he talks about in his new book, I think the title is The Things You Should Know That You Haven't Been Told, something like that. And he talks about with microaggressions that is part of the politically correct slash PC um, genre. And that people are being very easily offended and we have to go through all these hoops to not offend somebody in natural conversation. And he gives examples. And I thought it was funny. He, he's right on the money that we get his so extreme. But I understood some of the concerns of those people. He, he gives a list of anecdotes of things that has happened to people. And uh, for example, this one, the first one he gave was, uh, I think the person said, oh, um, so you're from Japan. Oh, what language do you speak? Asian? Now, that was the first one. Okay. And then the second one was, if I can remember, um, it's a little bit more complex because they did, you're dealing with different layers. And I think it was that one that, in particular that I'm really interested in more of a topic because of the different layers of this, uh, what he calls microaggression. A woman is recounting a story, recounting a story about when she and her family, the, her husband and children, go to like a, a restaurant and she says, well, it's obviously we're together, I thought, but when the person addressed my husband, um, the person said, um, and you, sir, and when he addressed, the person addressed the lady, and you, miss. And this angered the woman. And the woman explained, like, she felt that the term miss is, um, some, oh, I forget how to pronounce the term, but it means, um, Oh, submissive to my sub, sub, something like the term submissive. I know it wasn't that word submissive, but it was sub something, but it meaning uh, something more subordinate. She's she's saying that the the, the term Mister is a is a is a formal address, and I mean, sir, uh, is a formal address, and. She, she felt like, okay, um, why didn't they use the term, okay, if, if they're going to use the term sir, they should refer to as lady or madam. And then the conclusion the lady says, well, personally, I prefer the term doctor. <laughs> you know, I understood. I, I understood. Um, I understood her. If she's a doctor, and the more I think male doctors, people by the term doctor, again, I don't know what's an MD, but the term doctor, uh, the title doctor she has, and you have to fight, you know, to get those titles. Uh, a lot of women may not finish school because they get married and have children. And now, we don't want the same um, respect, 
especially if they're collegiate and you have your titles, you know, you have your degrees and your doctorate. You want to feel that you are on equal par. You don't want to feel or reminded that you're less than, of course, you're a woman. So I'll, I'll grant the person that. Um, but I, I, I feel, I, I could understand as a woman, I could understand, I know what it feels like to try to strive for personal excellence and to be taken seriously. Some women don't feel that they're being taken seriously. And I remember my very, very first job, the, the, the department I worked in was at one time 100% female. It was only later on we had a, um, like a temp or a helper um, who was a male. But before this uh, man uh, started working in my department, the, in the department that I worked in, um, I remember the woman saying, and I respected her too. She, I, I, I liked how her projection. She seemed professional. I, I like, I, I like, I respected her. And she said to me, you know, if uh, I know she mentioned something like if she were a man, you know, that that she worked hard to be treated the way she is. And it was something about gender and being, uh, being a woman and, and man. If you, if, if, to get the respect, she had to work extra hard. She had a, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, she had a, an alpha personality, not pushing, I, I respected her. Even though she had that role, slash uh, male role, as, as a leader, but I, but she carried herself as a woman. You know, you see that yes, she is a woman who's in a position of authority, and I treated her as such, as a woman of authority, as a person of authority who just so happened to be a woman. But she said this to me, and I thought it was very interesting. And then fast forward, okay, that was over. That's that was about 37, 38 years ago about maybe um, seven years ago, I, um, I was in college and I had to see the dean for a very important um, address. Something had, someone had stolen my identity over the internet and had emailed everyone on my contact list, you know, with the, the smartphones. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't my smartphone. It was um, my email. They were able to hack in, and any person who ever emailed me or that I emailed, they had access to, and they had this way to electronically send out a global mailing list, email, to every contact me. And they said that um, I need help, I'm, I'm stranded in uh, Europe, and I got um, hijacked by a uh, gunpoint, and they took my wallet, and I need to get home, can you please send me money? Okay, now that was not me, and I only learned of the incident when a faculty member of the school, who I'm in contact with all the time, calls me and says, hey, uh, are you okay? Uh, I want to make sure you're okay. I, I got uh, an email from you and uh, I was concerned. So when I got that email, you know, she, she, yeah, she called me and left the message on my answer machine. She didn't even touch it. She called me and left the message because she had my phone number. So I called her back. I don't know what she's talking about. Then she tells me. And then a family member calls me. I think, I think the same day, yeah, the same day. I think a couple of hours apart. 
I get to the school the next day, I think it was. No, I went to the police first and sent them a copy of the, the email. But when I couldn't get into my email, that's why they locked me out of my own email. But I knew it had to be something because I had to go to the police. And either, either way, I went to the police and told them what happened. And so that's very common. And that has even happened to me. Um, yes, yeah, just uh, it's a scam and blah, 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 blah. You know, just fill out this this thing. Uh, this was, you know, we make a police report. So I got a copy of the police report and went to my school. But also I got a, um, a constant, my, my professor, I think, also contacted me as well. So I went to the dean. I was really scared because um, my reputation. And I'm not that type of person. And I want it back. I want it, you know, you should always try to maintain a record, you know, a good, a good image. So I went to the dean of the school. And this is where about the microaggression comes in. And, it, and it's telling about me as well. Now, the school is a school that's predominantly, at least the people who run the school are Jewish. And many of them are Orthodox Jews. It's in a neighborhood. Half the neighborhood is Orthodox Jewish. Another half is predominantly West Indian and Black. So, um, the, my going into the dean, I, now I didn't know who the dean was. I just, I, I think I was directed to go to the dean, that the faculty member, I think the faculty member that called me, said, hey, you need to talk to the school head. She may have told me to go to the dean. So I went to the dean and I, I bought my paperwork and I see that the woman is a, um, what looks like a uh, Hispanic black woman. And I knew that I better address this woman in a, in a very um, professional way because I don't want to offend her because I, something, something in my instincts told me that if I offend this woman and her being a person of color in this position, I'm on her poopoo list. So it was just something I was conscious of. And, I, and something like this reminded me of another situation that I'll, that I'll make a, a, that I'll probably address also. But, so I, I wanted to make sure I say her name. And when, when, of course, my coming in to see her, I, I just, I just needed to get this right. So I said, uh, "Hello, Mrs. So and So," and then she flips out on me. Don't call me Mrs. So and So. I'm Dean So and So. Really, really mean tone. And I said, "Oh, excuse me. Of course." Being so and so, blah 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 blah, and I told him the story. But it was something that is what I think called a, 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 a microaggression because she's a so called minority, and I didn't give her the title of being so and so. I never talked to someone like uh, of a title like that. I always, I always in, in school. Uh, Mr. Mrs. or Professor, because you teach a professor, even if they're not, they, even if they don't have the doctorate, I still call Professor so and so, Professor so and so, or Mr. so and so, you know, if they're a faculty member of some type, okay? Um, but, that, but that was a microaggression on my part. Unintentionally, un, I was unintentionally um, offending her. But I also remember about this other situation with that same thing in the back of my mind that how I better word this because of who I'm talking to. This was a 
a minister, a Protestant minister. I was living in the West Indies at the time and knew in this uh, neighborhood. And it was a, like a, three houses. And one of those three houses on the hill was this uh, makeshift church, you know, a house that was used as a church. church. And we were having discussion and something was so I, like, just, I don't know where it came from. And I never thought like this, really, but just something about this man that I picked up in my spirit, and I was right. <laughs> the man also was a, um, had skipped town from the mainland because of a sexual transgression against uh, teenagers, teenage girls. And just something about him, about he, he had a misogynistic way about him. At least he associated with this particular, this guy who just seemed to have a, a very uh, aggressive towards his wife. And I think my spirit picked this up. Just something, but I didn't know what it was. So it was about um, the term. Um, I, I, it, it's not for the, the title. I mean, the, the topic. But um, I had to use the uh, the word uh, history. It was something about history, and then I said, "Or well, her story." And I just just something because this guy, just something about this guy. Oh, then he responds, oh, I bet you one of those woman livers, blah, 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 blah. And back then, I was far from any um, woman's rights or anything like that. I was just a, a girl from Queens, Queens, New York, who uh, uh, relocated to uh, the Caribbean just trying to get me... Um, get along and everything. But see, sometimes, so, so sometimes we could trigger things in, in others. We, we're people, you know, people can pick up things from other people and you may not know what it is. And to compensate for that feeling of inadequacy or whatever, uh, anxious anxiety, you say something, but what you really say is what what you what you're what you perceive in that other person. It was that other person who had an issue of again about women, and that women had to be uh, subordinate to men, and it, it came out in the in the church. And as time went on, it, it, it revealed itself, and I eventually left. So. This microaggression in, in society is really, it, 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 it's, it's unfortunate that you get so tense and hostile about this world. And I feel that, that like, um, David I really, really capsulates what's going on, this infighting fighting upon each other. And I, I think it's going to result in a meltdown, a social meltdown. Um, but I also have uh, received a microaggression <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it really bothered me. See, that I, what I learned about the term microaggression why it bothers people who feel that they're being um, um, targeted with these words, with certain you know, things that people say. It's because, in my opinion, microaggressions on the surface, in, in some instances, are covered up that, that, that it, it all has to do with intent. People could accidentally offend someone, but sometimes people say things and try to cover it up. And 
offend the person that way. So the knife, even though it's a butter knife with a microaggression, but it goes in deeper because the intent or perceived intent. Two microaggressions that really irritated me was, again, at the same school I went to, it was a white woman from Georgia. She seemed, in my opinion, very fake. She came across as the ultra-liberal. She And I felt that she was doing um, psychological games with the people in the classroom. I've never experienced this type of class in my life. And then in different colleges, and this is the first time I met a professor like this. I, I which is something about her. And I guess it's the signs of the times about this microaggression and, and what do you call it? Social justice warriors. Now that not I I would say that label fits her perfectly. The social social justice warriors. And she's she's about um I, I believe she was older than me. She, she could have been in her 50s, 60s. Um, she's blonde and blonde, she has blue eyes. But very, like, we call down earth. Um, and she gave an interesting. <laughs> she, the book that we had to get was a book, I, I, yeah, this was a social, I think this was a sociology class or something like that. And the textbook was the first of its kind that I ever read. That was, um, I think the writer of the book was an Asian man, an East Asian man who displayed his anger against um white people in general, and, and I think the white male. And uh, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was amazing. I I was dumbfounded that a book like this, it was a, it, in essence, it was an anti-white people's book and to teach about sociology. And then the classroom of uh, the teacher, again, it's a white teacher from Georgia. We had to watch this film. And the film was, a, I don't know why she's showing this film, but she shows this, it, not a film, it was like a documentary about the, um, uh, what do you call it? Pageants, beauty pageants for toddlers, you know, like like a like a like a two year old to a five year old that that age range, and they were getting weird in the film. The the the, 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 the kids, it, it, it looked weird, and I was offended. And sitting in the front row and watching this this thing in front of me, and. I didn't like that the kids were being sexualized, I felt. It wasn't cute. And if you're molested as a child, things like that is not something that's nice to watch. And then there was a girl next to me. Um, oh, I know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but, but yeah, that was uh, one of the things that she was showing. And I was feeling very uncomfortable and I don't know why she's showing this, but I, and I think she wanted us to write about something. It was just very bizarre. And then um, the microaggression was, okay, so I'm feeling uncomfortable. And then she, I, I don't know what my, I don't remember what my question was. But her response was, like she was trying to find an example, and she was, oh, well, like, like, like Pencil Washington. Now, I know that Denzel Washington is an actor. Of course I know who he is. But I felt, as a microaggression, I felt that she only used him as an example solely because of his race. 
he wasn't in any movie recently, you know, at that time. But she pulls him out of the hat that, oh, I have to know who this person, of course I know who he was. I was going to ask, she said, well, I don't know who he is. <laughs> to, really, to really blow with her mind. But I didn't. But I felt that, I guess, because she's coming from the South, and she has to grab something out of her hat, so to speak, the rabbit out of the hat, of a, of a, of a, of a tool she can use to display, uh, to give a message, so, to help me understand something. She could have used any performer. But why that one? So the microaggression is, hey, if I were a, let's say, a, a Chinese person or a Hispanic, so would she have gotten, you know, examples from that? It's assuming because the person, the actor is black, that I have to know that actor's name. But what if I'm not from the States? What if I'm from some other place? Not every, not everybody watches this movie. But that was, but how it made me feel. It made me feel she was making fun of me and focusing on my race when race was not the question in the formula of the class, of, of what initiated it, you know? So we talk about apples, but she's going to bring in an orange. We think, oh, you're going to understand the orange because of what you are, not about the subject matter. So it was really something. And then another microaggression was I was, um, but I was at a pier and at a cafe, outdoor cafe, and I'm talking to an individual, and there was another southern white woman, elder, older. She could be in her 70s, and uh, there was a 70s, 80s group, and I think she might have been the younger or the leader of that group. They, they were vacationers. And um, she comes, walks over, real like, like buddy buddy and everything, but she's I, I'm irritated with her immediately because she has this fakeness about her. And she's up in my face, very close. She like bends over, like I'm sitting down, and she bends over and puts her face next to my face, talking to me, just jabbering. And she's talking about the, the people, you know, we're, we're tourists and blah, 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 we're from here and blah, 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 blah. And then she says, oh, are you a native? And I was like, I felt taken back. I didn't like that. And so I said, I am a New Yorker. I said, I'm from here. I'm a New Yorker. And oh, and, that was, and it's just going on and on. And so this is a microaggression. There's nothing wrong of being made up. But I felt that what she really was getting at, and I addressed this in a past video, what she really was getting at is that, are you a local person? And you being a native, but yet I know you don't control the scene. You don't control the politics. So here, you're a native, but you don't control your society. And that white people do. That's how I took it. And that's why I was angry inside but I stood my ground and I just said, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker. And I left it and dropped the issue. That is a microaggression. And I felt, again, it's about intent. When you perceive someone's intent, a true microaggression is the intent behind the word. And that I felt her intent was disguised as a butter knife, but actually it was a, a sword that was to pierce inside my heart. So today, how racism, sexism, or being against certain nationalities, that 
You don't want to be perceived overtly as a so-called bigot. So you use terminology to, to but it's disguised to be the real weapon. And then you can hide behind it and say, oh, I, I, I didn't mean any harm. Of course, some people really don't mean harm, you know? It's intent. It's what people see. In fact, this reminds me of another situation that's very recent. This happened two days ago. And it's all about perception and what people do when they perceive you as being a certain way. But it's but it's programming. People are being programmed to respond to people in certain ways or to treat people in certain ways. Now, I was walking my, my dogs, my three dogs. I was on 42nd Street in Manhattan. And this street is extremely crowded with all types of people. And at certain times of the day, you have most, a lot of tourists. People from out of town, and they're going in to see the theater, you know, um, the Broadway shows and everything, and uh, have uh, lunch and dinner with family. And so I'm going past this one particular theater, and there was a uh, a woman and a child, a young child. The child might have been 11, 12 years old. And... The little girl is really excited. They're a white couple, a white, a white family. And they're very nice. And I think they're from Britain. And she sees the little dog and she goes down to pet the dog. And then she catches herself. She says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. May I, may I pet your dog? So I said, of course, you can pet my dog. And they're petting. And then my dogs are having a good time. And then another little girl runs over, she was an Asian, an East Asian looking woman, I'm sorry, girl, about the same age as the young white girl, and then a, a woman comes by, an Asian, East Asian looking woman, comes over and says, oh, did you ask permission to touch your daughter? And she's really, you know, saying this heavy to the little girl. And, and, and I think this is, that was good, you know, hey, you can't just run and pet a dog. And she, I guess she's trying to teach her dog, I mean, her daughter, uh, you know, how to be polite. So the little girl, so but when the woman said that, she looked at the white woman, you know, because the, the, the woman was kneeling down on the ground because the little girl was sitting on the ground petting my dog. And the woman came and, and tended her daughter, hey, you know. And so she had to look up to look up at, look at any of us, but she was looking at the white woman and telling her, I didn't catch on at first, and, and he says, you should ask if it's okay to pet the dog. Of course the white woman didn't say anything because it's not her dog. So the little girl talks to the other little girl, could I touch you, could I pet your dog? The young white girl said, and, and, and she, she gestures very exaggeratedly and says, this is not my dog. Then I said, it's my dog. So she, stand, you know, she stands up, she's all, oh, but she's like hesitant. And I'm looking at her and I want her to, you know, I, 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 was, I wanted her to come out. I could have just, oh, just you need to pet the dog. No, I wanted to wait for her to ask me to prove a point, you know, teach her, you know, to ask the owner. So the little girl says, not, not pet your dog. I said, of course you can. But I thought it was something. Now I have all the, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the leash in my hand. The three, the three leashes are in my hand, I have three dogs. And all the leashes are in my hand. It's not in the little girl's hand or the mother's hand. It's in my hand that the Asian woman addressed the question to the white woman. And so I thought there was something else. So I, I know the woman 
the Asian woman was not trying to be rude to me, but see, there was an assumption. And the assumption was that it belonged to the white woman or to ask the white woman before asking me, yet I'm holding the leaf. Now, again, I don't know whether in East Asia they have people that look like me who walk dogs for white people or, I mean, I, I, I don't know. But I, I was offended, but I wanted to make a point. See, to, to get, me to get offended and to say something hostile towards the little girl and the woman would not really serve my purpose. You know, it would be an instant gratification, but not something that's far-sighted. And I felt that something far, a far-sighted message needed to be instructed here. See, it's obvious that they're not being ed- they weren't educated that I could own these dogs. And so I want them to know that, hey, it's okay to ask someone like me permission and that someone like me can own the three little dogs that I have and then that, that it's safe to ask someone like me. I felt that some people from, you know, people from other countries see American television and American movies and show us, show black people or non-white people who are an Asian negative stereotypes that we're um, criminals, uh, drug dealers, murderers, rapists, and big mouth uh, so-and-so. So I wanted to teach them that I could speak for myself and that I can own doors and that it's safe to ask someone like me, could, you, could I pet the dog? That's what I wanted to convey, that it's okay. And so you have to educate people. But it's at a point, when do we have to, when, 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 will, we be, when will we be finished of educating what I think is something that's common? I mean, that, that should be understood. You know, I, I, I didn't know what the confusion was. I have the leashes in my hand, and I'm an adult. Yet the Asian woman is looking at the white people and not me, the person who has the dog. It's amazing. So we're being programmed. People are being programmed. And that's why I feel that it's very important now in the black community that we present ourselves in a professional manner. People only know what they see. And if they see you as these negative images, they're going to be afraid to talk to you. And I think that's part of the problem what happened with the Starbucks situation, that the woman was afraid to engage in the men. So she only went so far, and the the woman at Starbucks just went so far and said that, because she went to the table, when the guy sat down, because uh, he didn't get access to the bathroom, and then she followed him, and, and when they, they when they were sitting down, they asked him, well, is there anything I can do for you? And they said, no, you know, we, we're just waiting for uh, uh, so-and-so, we didn't have a meeting. It was a two-minute gap. When they came in, and when she called 911, that there was a st- disturbance, and that the men refused to buy something and refused to leave. So I, so it's something. So it gave the impression that there was something hostile, something uh, uh, aggression. And so luckily the cops didn't just go outright and shoot them and beat them up. So again, that 
we, we are responsible of what we project. But you know, we, we, we're individuals as well. And that we're not responsible for everybody. We're responsible for our actions, regardless of race or gender or nationality. So that's all that I want to share for now.